There are plant release parties. Like, who knew? I'm pretty sure that's pretty going to be news to yeah. most people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's One of the perks popular. of going to trade shows. <laughs> that's awesome. What's up, good plant people? I am Michelle pretending to be Mario today, and this is another episode of the Plant Nerd Podcast. And we have Kata, the queen of perennials, Devin, the dawn of, no, the duke, the duke of North Florida, <laughs> and Mario, the master of this podcast on a usual episode, and they are live on location. So I am so excited to hear what have you been seeing? What is going on over there? Tell us all about it. Do you want to start, Mario? Well, it's in Baltimore. It's Vance. I have no idea what Vance <laughs> stands for, but it, it what it means to me is that like 3,000 booths are, are jammed packed into this, these giant cavernous halls. And it's just, it is a plant nerd like Have playground been. right now. And I am just at this booth with, with Dwayne Moon, uh, just an incredible tree grower from Georgia. And I wanted to show you all this giant tree that he wow. got in here. And this thing wow. is That's 18 insane. feet tall. This is, this is a new variety. There's Dwayne right there. He's been growing trees for more than a minute. And this is the Everest Western Cedar. It's a Thuja Picata. And it is just amazing. One of the key features about this tree and the reason why it's so special, most evergreen giants have what they call the bell bottom. It's like, I'm backing all the way up so you can see all of it. it has that kind of the bell bottom where the base of the tree kind of flares out and it just, it becomes to look a little unattractive. That this Everest tree grows straight up and has this more kind of columnar effect. And I think it's going to be a game changer for a lot of people that want to have that like screen tree look, but really need more space. You know, it's like a, come maybe a smaller backyard that has uh, the need for that boundary tree and just needs something with just a little bit more structure to it. And they have some other trees here. I'll, I'll, I'll highlight two other ones. Mario. They have the Robin Holly and then this Crypt. What? Can you also ask him, like, how does he get those trees into the trade show? I've yeah. always been wondering that. Like, whenever I set up my booth with my, you know, comparable teeny tiny perennials, <laughs> I'm already, like, exhausted <laughs> hauling those around. So, like, how are they bringing this from a farm to this trade show? Oh, well, they bring it on a tractor trailer, and then they have forklifts. And, you know, they put it on the, the root ball so that the tree extends out. So when they leave, it's on a, it's a major industrial forklift. And they also drive cars in here. I mean, there's so many tree growers here. And just to give you a sample, like some of them are small b and Some of them are, you know, little native plants. This was Warren County Nursery from McMinnville, Tennessee. There's just so many. And everybody's coming from all over, really, east of the Rockies. I mean, people are coming you know, from all over the world. To show off all of their plants. We That's should incredible. probably even like take a little video later just to show everybody like how even like teardown is working. Like it is mm -hmm. really crazy how like those big cars come in and haul stuff away. I'm on the main aisle. This is the main entrance and oh, it yeah. just goes and goes and goes. And this is just one hall. There's a whole nother hall that there's where no I am. Tata's in the <laughs> other hall. Thank you. Thank you for the FOMO. I appreciate it. And now I know what to schedule for next year. But let's. Absolutely. Yes. Wait. Um, so, Mario, tell me, is there another tree that you wanted to feature that something that stood out to you? Um, well, it was, I'll put them in the show notes, but there's a cryptomeria that you got to check out. And then that Robin Holly is really pretty. So that was. It's called Southern Selections. Dwayne Moon is the propagator. I'll put it in the show notes, but really cool stuff. But I'll let you let uh, talk to the other two, and then I'm going to show you all some. I'm, I just walked over to Star oh. Roses, so I'll highlight okay. those in a minute. Love it. Y'all go it. ahead. I'm going to go tiptoe through some of these roses. Okay, perfect. All right, Kato, what's up? What is growing on over there in the Walters Garden booth? Yeah, so obviously I am with my work at the Walters Gardens booth, and I'm going to try, I don't know if we can flip cameras around. I believe we cannot, so we'll I don't just think you hold can. it. You're going to have to spin, <laughs> spin. 
that's okay. <laughs> Both those muscles, right? Yes. So yeah, our <laughs> we always highlight the plants of the year. So here is all the proven winners plants, uh, perennials of the year. You see one of my favorite, all-time favorite plants is featured here. This is Amsonia storm cloud. It's beautiful. Such a fantastic plant for the south. It's so gorgeous and it blooms very Love early. Mine. Yeah, it's just amazing. And then I think the one thing that people always forget is that it's not just really great for the spring, but then in, in like, you know, summer and fall time, it gets this beautiful color. Most people just know Amsonia Huprichia, that really thin leafed one. So storm cloud has actually much thicker leaves. And I'm gonna try to just show you the plant itself. Can you see that? So yeah, it's really a absolute cool plant. Um, um, we are also finally, finally, it was so exciting, but like launching the Argent Soul um, Mangave line. So I am pushing a customer very kindly. <laughs> but, <laughs> so here we have the new Art and Soul Mangabe. It's Ooh, really cool. No, it's six different ones. This is kind of the look of the whole brand. Do you have a favorite? Which I really like. Is there a favorite? Oh, Akata? absolutely. So this is um, Mangabe Night Owl. And it is just so cool like it how is. dark it is and the structure of yes. it i feel like yeah it's been so great to like talk to people about that i really have enjoyed it i mean as we all know i love mangabe so i can talk about it all day long me too <laughs> nothing new me here too. <laughs> i know i know somebody who will take home some <laughs> probably Devin. i will say this is like the coolest part about trade shows is that like people don't want to haul those plants back so so mm -hmm. i mean maybe those big trees but like the regular plants, you get so many plants, free plants. It's amazing. I've already got so, a big long list. I'm filling up the van to bring back home to Florida. Devin, Since I drove, I I'm like, I'm bringing it. home plants. I drove, That's, I have to drive 14 hours home. I'm bringing home a carload of plants excited. to make it worthwhile. I, I also want to just show you this like cute thing, but like this mangava started blooming. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's like like perfect oh, timing. Wow. Like mine at home mine at home in the landscape have started blooming they're really? freaking awesome i love them that's mm -hmm. yeah this is thunderbird like a really narrow one so it's really cool but i just love that like it i don't think usually it will be that light green but it's like you know we're inside so things stretch and they look a little different yes. and there's really quite the science behind it to like make plants bloom like when you I'm sure them. that you guys will be right. surprised, but this is a Coreopsis and it's in full bloom. Not, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Our growers do a fantastic job. Yeah. That's awesome. And Devin, I really want to see a photo of your okay. home and you loaded in with the van. Like, I, I feel like you're going to have to do yes. some serious Tetris there. So I want to see what that ends up looking like. Yeah. And also tell me where, where yeah. are you? What are you looking at? What's up? In so this is this is the one of the plants I'm most excited about. One of the new plants. Um, I actually saw the when they revealed it at Cultivate. We actually got to go to the reveal party for this plant, so that was cool. Um, it's new to garden centers this year. It's called the Eclipse Big Leaf Hydrangea. But the cool thing about this hydrangea, look it's, how dark those leaves are. That's so. Cool. I mean, look at it. Them. Is so it's a gorgeous. burgundy leaf hydrangea and it holds its color and so this one is going to be a hydrangea that will bloom either like a pinky red or a bluey purple depending on the ph of the soil right so but this is a cool really new hydrangea that's going to actually hold its color because i've tried other uh burgundy leaf hydrangeas before and they just wash out or don't really truly get the color that you see online but i mean i have this thing is beautiful these were grown it's a new plant by first editions um, so these were grown by them, but I've actually seen probably 10 different growers with them in their booths that they're growing and man, they all have that burgundy color. So I'm excited. This is going to be another one that I'm going to try to get one to take home. Or so, two. Yeah. I really feel like I or don't two. love hydrangeas, but when I saw that one at Cultivate, I was like, this is just so like special looking and really fun. So yeah, I'll definitely get that one when I'm in past. Can we talk for a second? Uh, yeah. Also, like there are plant release parties. Like who knew? I'm pretty sure that's pretty gonna be news to yeah. most people. Like, 
It's one of the very perks fun. to go into trade shows. That's awesome. That's also why we look all it, a little it's, tired there's a red, today. It, it's like a little, yeah, it's been a long week. But it's like a red carpet, a, 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 be it a little dirty red carpet that that uh, they roll out these plants. Wait, dirty because of the soil or? Yeah, of course. Yeah, There's dirt yeah, everywhere yeah. here. No, no, this isn't. We're saving the only only plants issue for a later. You're right, day. you're right, you're right. Sorry, Second sorry, day. sorry. My <laughs> mind went the wrong place. Okay, Devin, what else are you excited about? So this is another new cool. This is I know Mario stopped by the um, star booth, but this right here is a new knockout from Monrovia. It's called Easy Beasy Knockout. So I don't know if y'all are familiar with the um, Sunny Knockout. Wait, is that Star? That Star Roses? Gets... Or where? who is it from? Yeah, so it's a knockout. Yeah, it's okay. a knockout. This is the new knockout from them okay. this year. Um, and they're actually, the cool little tidbit is Knockout Roses is celebrating 25 years this year. So they Knockout Roses have been around for 25 years, which is wild. That is. But the thing that separates this from Sunny is sunny used to always if you've ever grown one which i have um they started off white i mean they start off yellow and they're yellow for about i don't know maybe half a day and then they turn white but this one is gonna hold this yellow color that's awesome so they've worked on this one and it holds its yellow color so it's not gonna wash out so that's really cool and then this other one orange glow this one did come out i think last year yeah. i have one of these in my yard it is the prettiest color I was actually picking some up for a customer from a vendor um, this spring, and I saw them, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to need three more of those because I need three for my yard. So I have that one at home. It's performed really, really well, and it's awesome. I really love it. Okay. So. Devin, I think, Mario, you were saying that you also wanted to show some sort of rose next. Well, no, he, he stole oh, never my mind. rose thunder. Oh. Um, but I, <laughs> well, I, I, went to I, I used, moved on. I went to a different booth as well, so I have to You've show got you more? something extremely cool. Of course. I just went over to the Leaf Joy booth, and they have those amazing, look at those. They're so cute. They're like H2Os. Aren't they adorable? There's like really small ones, but then also really big ones. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, so that is the cool part of like trade shows too. Like you have, you know, you work in your own booth and you do like perennials, but then you find everything kind of like from house plants. I know it's so great. This is how I have all those plants. At home. <laughs> okay, Mario, what were you going to show? Yeah, I'm going to show um, this is a collection that we've been playing with a lot. And it's the, uh, it's basically, it's just called the American Beauties Native Plant Collection. <laughs> And this one, Stairway to Heaven, Jacob's Ladder, you can see just that beautiful variegation on this plant. Now, a lot of these plants aren't necessarily blooming, but you can get a sense of some of the textures. And one of the ones that I love is this Jacob Klein Bee Balm. I mean, you're going to do like a butterfly garden yes. or, you know, really kind of help promote some native habitat. You know, having it in a collection where you can kind of feel like there's some trust there in terms of, Yes, this is a native. Yes, it is going to be helping my pollinator garden. And, you know, there's a lot of like little things you got to watch out for. When you have them all in a collection like this and vetted, it makes it really easy. And they have some great information on what, if you plant with sort of American Beauty's native plant collection, what is going to be the beneficial thing for that insect or that butterfly or, or the food chain? So, I really like what they're doing. I really like how they're promoting it. Be the change. They're doing some really great job. This is that American Beauty's native plant collection. Good, good and I work feel like there. don't they don't they have like also a online shop so you can actually get them all over the US, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you can order them online. There's a lot of different uh, outlets. Uh, one is called Green Promise Farm, where you can find the collection, have them delivered to you or have it shipped to you, I'm sorry. And I think we need more growers in the state of Georgia, certainly growing these types of plants uh, because native plants are being asked for. And, you know, having these kind of curated marketing packages for growers, super important to educate the customers. And the customers are asking for it. So they're, they're doing a really good job. Yeah, I hear... All the time, people talking about native plants, non-native. Um, so that's exciting that the marketing is is there to promote that. 
All right. You... Yeah, I'm just walking down the aisles. Everybody's looking at yeah. me weird, but uh, I know. <laughs> they think I'm filming Liz? them, but they don't so know I got the a... camera's on me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got another cool plant oh. right here. This is called the Jurassic Velociraptor Ribbon Fern. It's from Monrovia, but that Wait, is a Wait, that's fern. a fern? Can you believe that? I thought that was Hakanakloa. I thought that was Hakanakloa. No, that is, nope, that's a fern. That thing is one of my favorite ferns ever. It's so cool. It's just got such an awesome texture to it. And like when the wind blows, it gives you movement. It's a nice evergreen fern, so it's gonna stay up year round. So- Does it retain that um, color? Strongly recommend that Does one. it retain that color? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's pretty cool i mean it's just such an awesome texture i have such an awesome yeah soft texture. i have not seen that before that is a really cool one because i that's a yeah, yeah. it's a new Go ahead. it's a new line the uh, jurassic series ferns is a new line of ferns from monrovia that's coming out so um they've got a lot in the collection so you should check it out on their website yeah right. I've, uh, i have got Go something ahead. cool what do you have insta hedge this is like oh, a mail yeah, that's order. A cool so oh. They ship it. This is really interesting. Where they they basically, hey guys, they they basically ship you the whole package. It's almost like a three foot hedge ready to go. I mean, this is what it looks like when they deliver it to or they ship it to you. These are all grown in Oregon. That's Boxwoods. so cool. Um, they have Podocarpus. That's a photocarpus. So it's several taxes. This one is the Thuja, and they call it Insta Hedge, but it's Insta Screen. Insta Screen. I've never played with it, but I, I think I'm going to put it in a landscape design pretty soon here. See how it does. Yeah, just. To I would love to hear how they do. Yeah, especially like so, I sometimes I'm really interested of what like the price is. You know, like do you really save time and money on doing something like that versus you know, a regular one. I think some people are also nervous I mean, I about like planting it. I think from a design perspective. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're planted too close, you know, and, and there's like some reasons why you wouldn't do it. But for a designer to have instant like architecture, it's amazing. So I think designers are going to spec it, but I don't know how well it's going to work in practice. We'll see. Well, let's try it. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. So I'm at one of my favorite... I'm at one of my favorite vendor booths, um, Bountiful Farms. Now, this isn't a new plant, but this is kind of cool. This is one thing that they do that they're kind of known for is their topiary. So it's an emerald arborvitae, but look, it's a bunny rabbit. Oh, that God. is <laughs> so cool. And this is a little heart. I got a cactus over that. here. <laughs> I'm going to show it off. It's hard to show. So, so Mario, Mario, as a designer, where would you recommend placing a bunny rabbit? topiary like that <laughs> in a children's yeah. garden hey, let, me, let, me interview, uh, let me interview uh, this guy right here <laughs> um yeah uh, michelle courtyards when you need a courtyard and it's a very small courtyard especially and you have a lot of detailing in there sometimes you know the whole look and feel is supposed to be that these boxwoods are touching right so when you go with some of that product like the Insta Hedge, you get that instant look that you really right. want. So topiary gardens, courtyard, you know, high-end kind of materials, especially, you know, I did a lot of work for HGTV, Netflix. It would have been so impactful to have that kind of instant wow um, for something like that. So real estate agents are going to love it. You know, people that do spec homes that it, it can't, it doesn't have the time to grow in. It's already growing in. It just needs to be maintained. That's where it's going to really be impactful for designers. Super cool. And then throw your bunny rabbit arborvitae in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Look at that. God. Is that caramel? No. Yeah. No. Isn't that beautiful? Really? Yeah. They still have this that. Water, this is watermelon. <laughs> watermelon. <laughs> I was yeah, I was about. like, wait. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Watermelon? That's interesting. You know which hooker I really yeah. want to try, uh, but I haven't. And I don't know if it's new anymore, but the peach berry ice, I think that's Walter's Garden, maybe. Yeah. Is it? I'm just curious yeah. how it does in the yeah, south. Yeah, we'll definitely get to one. Okay. 
Oh, it's actually it's actually really good. I Is also it? just found something really cool. Um, I'm at one of my customers or like our customers' booths. They're not technically not in my, but they always build even like those really cool like living walls. And they have Hugo right oh, here in the living wall, which is so actually cool. such a great idea. Because if you think about how you Hugo's grow like in the wild, so they definitely work really well for living walls. Here's a Pullman area, Ooh. some ferns. It's really done nicely for like a shade living wall. That's really cool. I just saw that and I was like, oh, it's so cool, right? Yeah, the whole, like some of the booths are just really, really beautiful. They put so much work into mm -hmm. their booths. Yeah. Yeah, set up and tear down here is crazy. I mean, it's some of them are wild. Okay. So, oh, speaking of a cool booth, I'll try to make it down while y'all talk. Yeah. Tell me about how long it takes to set up a booth and then how long it takes to tear down a booth. And then how many people are doing this? What's so it really depends, but you know, like we were planning on having three people for our booth set up, for example, the weather has been terrible. Oh. So, um, it was at the beginning, just me by myself. And then my new coworker who just started four days ago was the only one that made it to help me. So it took us about like five hours when it really should have taken us two. But it also depends so often like which trade show you are at, how big it is. So I would definitely say a trade show like Nance, the booths are much bigger. They are much more like more design behind it and people put a lot of effort in. If you go to a little tiny trade show, it might be not quite as impactful and therefore it doesn't take as long. Like if I go to a small show, I'll be like done in an hour, even by myself. So. Yeah, but it's so cool to see how much like people really want to have like the best booth here. That's cool. Yeah, they give out awards for really? like, best booth. Best booth. Yeah, new best booth, coolest mm -hmm. new plans, coolest new like product. Because the one thing is we've shown you now only plants really, but you can find literally anything, like from pools to pottery to huge machinery like i'm just walking actually by some like tractors and stuff so like whenever you work in the horticulture industry you can basically buy, buy anything here that's so cool so, christmas lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh christmas it's also lights. like so much fun christmas yeah. lights and you keep seeing your friends like every year people come here and you get to know them and it is just really it's it's work but the that's honestly one of my favorite. There is also a lot of party there, right? <laughs> oh. All those red carpets. Yeah. Yeah, look at those things. So it's like really cool stuff for retailers so to have neat. in their shop. I know. And it's really nice to like see what is up and trending in the next years. What is that? Steel? Mm -hmm. Steel what? Steel is, are those corn? Oh. Steel. Yeah, they do steel edging, steel pots, all kinds of stuff. But this is a big booth that took forever to set. That is so neat. That is so neat. Well, I'm a, I'm a little jealous, but I'm very happy that you guys are having a good time. And thank you for giving us the scoop on everything. Is there any last? Absolutely. Mario has been walking through giving us like the grand tour. <laughs> yeah. I know. I've only made it like a... one aisle down and up while we were talking. <laughs> like this is about how big it is. <laughs> yes, caught us clearly on the other but, side in a yeah. different and, building. And we've only shown you over three thousand booths for this event. Oh my gosh. And this is and we got this is the kicks off the trade show season. So we're gonna be at another trade show tomorrow in North Carolina. It's called the Green and Growing next in Greensboro, week. North Carolina. Okay. I'm going to be at TPIE in, in Florida at the same time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. And then in two weeks, yeah. Kata, Devin, and I are going to be at the same trade show in Mobile, which is called the Gulf States. And the Gulf States Horticultural Trade Show is awesome as well. It's not as quite as big, but great growers down there, uh, great landscape products. So we're going to be doing this again in two weeks and showing you the best of uh, Gulf States. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, I have to go back to my booth okay. to work. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah. So since Katja, Katja's going to... we got to get back to work. Very, very busy. All right. All right. We'll let you get back to, to work. And this has been another episode of the Plant Nerd Podcast with everyone out on location except for me. So thank you guys for joining. What are you showing over there? Anyway. Uh, Scapes the South magazine's out. That's, that is awesome. That is awesome. So thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I forgot how you close out. <laughs> how do you close? This was this was the Plant Nerd Podcast with Michelle, our new host. There we go, <laughs> figuring it out. All I know, Devin, Mario, and Kata. I know. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next episode. <laughs> See y'all. Keep going and growing. Bye-bye. There you go. Grand <laughs> <laughs>